Hey, what's going on? The uh, little video for you. So you've seen in newspapers on the internet, you've seen all these infographics that give you information that uh, makes comparisons. And here's one about the amount of caffeine in various various drinks, ranging from the uh, fairly low amount in McDonald's to the uh, 54.2 milligrams per fluid ounce in Death Wish coffee. I've never heard of it, but I'm pretty sure I'd like it. Um, here's another one about the income tax rates throughout uh, the various states. You can see Vermont over here with an 8.95% income tax rate, which is, uh, I'd say it's on the uh, we're on the higher end of the uh, tax rates infographic for you. Here's one about uh, basketball championships. championships. Uh, you got a bunch of Celtic ones, got a few Heat ones. All right, now those are Bulls and then Heats. So just different ways to display information. We're going to focus on, uh, for right now, basic graphs that we can construct and we're going to focus largely on the scale and the origin so what is the uh, what's how to pick a good scale for a graph and what is uh what does the origin mean so let's say we have some data and this is actual data about gas prices ranging from uh last january january of 2012 through uh, just barely before school ended the average gas price for regular i think it's nationwide and so if we wanted to make a graph with this data, we'd want to know, we kind of want to know what the lowest price was. 338, is that the lowest? 331. So we're looking at from $3.31 and the high price, 390. 390. Okay, so if we wanted to do some sort of a representative, we'd have to keep in mind those two prices. Um, 331 and 390, but our graph on the bottom, we'd have January, February, March, April, on down through, and we would just put our gas prices in here. So the question is, how do we make the scale? If we're trying to get represent numbers between 331 and 390, you know, we probably would have the lowest value be 330 and up to probably four dollars just to have a little bit of a ceiling, and we'd probably go 330, 340, 350 on up through. So we could do it that way. Three dollars and thirty cents, and then on up to I don't know four dollars, and we would make these nice and evenly spaced. I'm not doing that in this particular example. That'd be one way to exempt to show it, and then you would see as the uh, as we plotted the gas prices. And I'm just going to make up some numbers. You can actually do it if you like. You might see that there were some major fluctuations in the gas prices. So that'd be one way to go about showing how the how this worked. We'd have a pretty narrow spread. We, of course, need a little ziggy here so that we know that we're not starting down here at the origin. Because the origin doesn't make a lot of sense because, um, well, the gas price would be down to zero, but time doesn't go to zero. So it's just a sort of star artificial starting point. If we wanted to show that there wasn't much change in the gas prices, we might, uh, you know, start here at zero and make, you know, zero, one, two, three, four. And then most of our prices would show up in this little tiny, you know, you'd see not much because our scale would be different. I started at zero dollars, you know, one dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars. Most of our prices would fall in this in this region. So depending on how we pick the scale, it's going to impact what you would see for drastic. So depending on who's making the graph, you want to show that there's a lot of change. You'd make a you make your scale pretty uh, large. You want to show no scale, no change. You'd make it as so that the prices are relatively close together. So you can play with the scales to change your message. That's one little message of this. Uh, video. Here's some data. Okay, this is data about Chittenden County houses. The median price. Okay, the median price is, you know, basically median is the halfway point. Half the houses are less lower priced, half the prices, half the houses are higher priced. So in Bolton, Vermont, half the price, half the houses on sale in the uh, in Bolton were less than 89,500 and half the houses that were on sale in Bolton were more than 89,500. And it runs through uh, these various ranges. So, uh, you know, I guess Charlotte might be the highest priced ones. So half the price houses sold in Charlotte were more than 226000 and half were less than 226000 Those are my sort of extreme ones. Then there's a list of the number of the total number of houses sold. So we might want to answer a question like, uh, is there a relationship between the median home price and the number sold? Could we be able, could we, you know, if we knew the median price, could we predict how many houses were sold? Is there some sort of pattern? So a way to, to represent that information would be to make a graph, okay? And we want to make our graph, we need to pick a scale that is an appropriate scale as we move forward, okay? So what we would do is we'll take the 89,500 and subtract it from the 226,300. I'm scrambling right now for a calculator. 
You might be able to hear that in the background. So I'm just going to just quick go 226, 300 minus 89, oops, minus 89,500. And that comes up to be, uh, what's it going to be? 136,800. And I'm going to say, well, let's go with about 20 divisions, just because that's a reasonable number to work with. 136, 800 divided by 20. When I divide by 20, I end up with about 6,800. And 40 for each one, and I don't want to, you know, make my scale 0, 68, 40. So I'm going to kind of round that roughly to 10,000. So we're going to count by 10,000 on the median house price. And in the number sold, we'll do the same sort of deal: 534 minus 11. We'll divide that by 20. So on that one, it turns out to be um, when I do 534 minus 11. I end up with 523, could have done that in my head. I'll then divide that, should do the run on, divide by 20, and it comes out to be about 26. So I would probably use 25. I'd count by 25 as I went through. So I would always try to pick a, you know, a, this one's going to be a little bit smaller, so it might give us a few more increments, but I think that'll be okay. I think actually what I end up doing is I'll probably go by 50s because that's a reasonable, a reasonable thing to do in this one, trying to go from 11 to 534, we could count by 50s and be reasonably okay. So, I've got my uh, increments. I'm going to make a graph, so of course I need some graph paper and I want to put my axes on there. There's my origin right down there in the corner. Use rulers, put arrowheads on the end because these things go on forever and ever. Label my axes. So total houses sold is going to go this way, and median price is going to go this way. The assumption I'm making is that the number of houses sold depends on the median price. So usually you put the thing that you think depends on this, uh, the vertical axis, the up and down axis. Okay, I know that my lowest number, if you remember, was, uh, where was that, 89. So I just started my scale back here at 80. So I'm going to count by, what do we say, 10,000? So this would be 80, 90, 100, 110, and you'll see as I... Uh, the next slide I've labeled those all in there and I did skip two spaces because I had the room and that gives me a little bit more ability to be more accurate as I go because now I can see you know between 80 and 90 I say, well that's 85 so it makes it relatively easy to put like 87 in there I can be accurate within like the within the nearest mark here so as much if I can spread it out a little bit and still not uh, spread the scale out a little bit and not make the graph too huge. That's what I'd want to do. I did the same thing on this other axis. I counted by 50s, but really I counted by 25s. I just labeled every 50. And I wouldn't want to go through here and put, you know, 25, 75. We don't need to be that detailed because people can infer that this space in between here represents, if this is, a you know, 50 to 100, then you can figure out that that's 75, okay? Um, so there's that detail on that side, counting by 50 for houses sold. So there's my data, and let's plot this first point, 89,500 with 24 houses sold. So 89,400 is about, you know, a little less than 90,000, and it was 24. Well, that line's 25, so I'm going to be a little bit below there, and there's my first point. Okay, so that represents Bolton, and I don't need to label Bolton because we're not really... At this point, we're looking at a bigger picture within Chittenden County. We don't need any labeling. If we need the labels, we go back to the, we want to know the points, we go back to this chart, and that'll give us the information. And so, you know, I put another point on there. That's the, uh, I think that's, what was that one? Charlotte, maybe? I don't know what exactly it was, or the next house. That's Burlington, I think, actually. Burlington, because they sold a lot of houses in Burlington, so it's way up there. And I just continue with my graph, and this is the graph all finished up. You notice I did do the little squiggly down here at median, at the start of median price because I didn't start with zero. It didn't make sense to make this go from zero to whatever. I just sort of stopped it, you know, started where I needed the data to be, and you just put the little squiggle to represent the break in the axis. Okay, my origin would mean zero, the price of the house was zero dollars, and we would sell zero of them at that price because well, nobody's going to sell the house for nothing, and, uh, well, most people would take a house for free, but we're not selling if we're giving away. So this is the completed graph. Okay, So we've got all the points in there. We're almost done with it. We do need to put a label up top here. What's the graph about? So it's the Chittenden County median home prices and number of houses sold. We've got all the data, and now we can answer the question. And the question is, is there a relationship between the median home price and the number sold? Do you see a pattern? 
You see anything that would indicate that, oh, yes, I could predict. If I knew that it was 180,000, we'd sell that much. I think not so much, because look right here in this 120,000 run, there's a bunch of uh, variation in here. Okay? So, you know, there could be 50 houses sold at 120,000. There could be 500 houses sold at 120,000, if that's the median price. So it's not a real good predictor. The uh, median price not a good predictor of the number of houses sold. Probably what's a good predictor of the number of houses sold is the location, maybe? That might be the biggest thing. Location, location, location. So, we've answered the question. I don't think there is. Generally guidelines. What type of graph? How are you going to best answer your question? So if the question is asking you to make some sort of comparison, a little scatter plot works out really nicely. We want to know what the origin represents. Does it actually mean something? You want to be able to look at a graph and say, oh, well, the origin means this. And typically, on any axis, you want somewhere between between 10 and 20 divisions as you're going. So, you know, the most you want is 20 tick marks on the on the axis. Uh, if you get much more than that, just it's just crowded. It doesn't give you good information. So I start by figuring out my range, divide by 20, and then I try to come up with a, uh, a reasonable number that's going to be easy to replicate. So, you know, some multiple of 10 or multiple of 25 or 100 or something like that, kind of round round appropriately to get, uh, to get the right division. It's not hard and fast, but you, don't, you just don't want your graph to be Okay, you know, and you can't really tell what's going on when the numbers are that, when you have these numbers, how are you going to label that, that sort of thing. Okay, so we'll work more with uh, graphs. I do appreciate you watching this video, and hopefully you learned something or refreshed your memory about something, and uh, you'll be prepared to make a few graphs of your own as we move forward. All right, well, uh, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.